Hi, everybody. It's uh, Nancy Reyes with For Your Canine. And Joanne Soyke with For Better, For Worse. And Lisa Batasca with Canine Defined. Let us know you're out there today. We're going to be talking about distractions in the environment. As the weather gets warmed up, we decided this would be a really good topic to um, chat about and kind of give, give everybody pointers on how to deal with um, the great outdoors for your dogs. Um, so if you're having, and if, please feel free to ask questions and we'll try to answer them as best we can. But one of the things we want to definitely talk about is um, how do you handle it? Depending, And it depends on quite a lot of things and it takes time. And there's so much in, there's so much to it that we're going to try to cover as much as much as we can in the little time that we have. Hi, Sue. Uh, and Sue has a young puppy, so she knows all about it. Anyway, um, one of the things, especially in the winter, some of us don't go for walks on a regular basis or we don't spend time outside or they're not around, you know, they're not, we don't go for walks as often. And then when you do go for walks in the, in the warm weather, then all hell breaks loose. So that's one of the things we want to kind of talk to you about. As the weather warms up, we can start working on things before they become a issue or a problem. Oh, Karen's wearing her squirrel T-shirt. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's kind of the, the uh, what do you call it, the theme for the day. So anyway, um, and distractions in the, and outside, we're, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit specific, and Joanne and Lisa can jump in. Um, we're talking about outside going for walks um, and going, you know, being out in the, in the, in the world, uh, whether it's a walk or out in the yard or things like that. So that's specifically what we're talking about for different environmental distractions is specifically <laughs> what we're going to discuss today. Okay. Even though that might include in some cases, dogs and people, but well, uh, a lot of the handling of it is the same. So. Um, that's, you know, just wanted to make sure that we're spe specifically addressing those things. Um, so how many of you have, I see a few of you that are, uh, tuned in, have young dogs, Susan, Ronnie, Sue, Sue has a young Vishla. So, um, the age <clears throat> does have a little bit to do with how the, how, you, how would you, you would handle it and what the dogs are going to do when they're the young, young dogs versus a little more mature or excitable dogs. So it's a little bit uh, different, right? Um, so Joanne has had an experience today with distraction in the great outdoors. Let's hear about it. <laughs> Here comes the bus. Thanks, Nance. So, <laughs> no, I, it was so funny. So I, there's a really big field. Um, where I used to go to school and I used to rent to teach. Um, so every once in a while, if it's a really nice day, it's, it's like a 10 acre, uh, grassy mm -hmm. field. So I'll go and I'll take the chuck it and I'll throw the ball. Um, and you know, the good dog. <laughs> so Noah, he, he is um, a good dog. <laughs> he is a, he is a good dog. He, he's not super interested in the ball. I mean, he likes it. He'll play a couple of times where my other two are, are kind of ball crazy. So they'll play fetch till they can't run anymore. Um, and so, you know, I kind of let him out and I'm okay letting him out to have a little bit of freedom. Right. So if you want to run off and sniff some things and do that, I'm okay with that. That's part of, to me, I think it's, it's given the dog a little bit of what they enjoy doing. Cause he does like to sniff. He is that kind of a dog. Um, but of course I call, right? All right, come on, buddy, come this way. And he was like, mm, can't hear you. And uh, he's like, come here, right? And I, I called three times and he has given me nothing. So of course I'm walking across this enormous field to get him. And of course, and then he poops. So I'm like, oh. so I, I'm like reaching down to pick up his poop and he takes off the other 10 acres. Of the field. So I'm like, no, at this point, he's not listening at all. So I finally get to him and he tried to run again. And I was like, sit. And he sat and I was like, good dog. But <laughs> I grabbed his collar and I was like, you're done. That's you're done. You lost all your privileges. If you cannot listen, I'm sorry. No more playing for you. Um, and so he so got was, he, the car. Was, he, was he sniffing? Oh, yeah. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Oh, yeah. Well, and the one so where he first went off to, he was sniff, 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 sniffing. And then guess what? Ran up the tree. 
So I think it was like the squirrel just was kind of all over, but it was a lot of the smell. So that area has a lot of deer um, that come through it. There are a lot of people who kind of run their dogs, like they walk their dogs, a lot of people um, through that area. And so I'm sure he was just, you know, reading the newspaper and checking everything out, which again, I don't mind. If you would have come when I called you, I would have released you back to go do what you wanted to do. Right. But nope. Mm -hmm. if you can't listen, that's to me, one of the biggest things, right? If, if you are going to be non-compliant and I'm trying to give you freedom, you lose your freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And typically, that is very obedient that way. So you see what I mean? And this, it's a really good, because typically this, that is not the norm for this dog. He's really pretty attentive and very, very focused on, on, um, on Joanne, but because we have, it's, you know, she hasn't been, ha had a chance to do that very often. And it's been, and it's, it, it you know, sometimes it get a little bit, uh, you know, uh, forgetful, which is why I wanted to talk about it and address, address it, uh, and, and discuss it a little bit more. Um, Lisa, do you have anything? So, and, and even still in the beginning, usually when I first, when we first work on this out with my dogs outside, I usually have them on a long line just to remind them that they have to come. Uh, because, because even, and, and Noah's a really good dog and he's still everyone and it do, doesn't happen often, but even the, the most well-trained dogs can sometimes go, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> right. Even though he, he, it doesn't, it happens maybe once every blue moon, right. That, 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 that and, it, and it wasn't a terrible problem. It's likely he ran off and never to be seen again. He was just right. doing his own thing. Right. I think yeah. also too, it's like temperament driven and then age driven as well, right? So mm -hmm. like like the puppies at a very young age, they do stay close, they don't wander off. And then everyone's like, oh, that's great. They'll, they won't do it anymore. And then they turn into teenagers and then people are more apt to be like, oh yeah. I'm like, don't get attached. That, that, that changes depending, yes. right? And then um, like right now, well, he's more of an independent little breed. This guy got the Pomsky again. And he doesn't care. He's super confident. There's temperament, right? So an independent breed specific. Um, and then he's just like, piss off. I got my own stuff to do. And he'll kind of putter off doing his thing. So, and then if you throw another dog in, he is very dog social. He likes people. He'll leave me for people too. So it's something that we're, we're working on for him just because I know it's potentially going to be an issue. I mean, the owners don't have a fence right now. So, and I don't know if they, I don't know if they're going to get one, but you know, he gets very distracted and then he'll be willing to take off. But Suzanne's follow me game is something I do in the yard with my dogs. And then, you know, with a yard I have, or the, um, the amount of space we have, we'll still do the same thing. But yeah, I do do a long line just because, you know, mm -hmm. for safety purposes, you know, and then, you know, for the most part, that's him screaming, by the way, sorry. Um, but for the most part, like my guys are pretty good with it, but we've been accustomed to doing it various locations, right? So generalizing numerous places and, you know, getting them to understand the follow me and then eye contact and the ability to split attention, those types of things. So, right. And, and me personally, my lab has a really, really good recall. I don't worry about it so much. My shepherd does too, but he'll have no moments like that. Mm -hmm. Right. He knows better, but if it's like some hot chick passing by or another dog, he's going to go visit it. So I don't have, I don't feel he's as reliable as I would like him to be. Granted, I haven't tested it in a long time, uh, but he tends to, he'll tend to be like, mm, and he's not independent. So the only thing um, where Vish, uh, uh, Noah's a Vishla, so he's a hunting dog, so he's he can be a little more independent. The shepherd, if I start to walk away, will in immediately stop that. <laughs> don't leave me, I love you. Exactly, don't leave me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's uh, again going back to Lisa's point, <laughs> temperament. Um, and 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 inc the interesting thing is Noah is very much a mommy's dog for sure. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, and he's still like, I'm gonna. This was a good smell, um, and the smells now that are coming up, and all the animals around, you're gonna have that, um, those issues with your dogs, right? Because it's great smells. It's good to to see what's what's 
going on and all that stuff. So, and you, and you want to give them that permission. So we're going to talk, a couple of them are Suzanne, uh, Suzanne's um, things that we use, or I have used personally, and I don't know, um, and I know Lisa and Joy, Joanne have as well. Um, and we'll kind of give you some tips on working it. So before we, I'll, I'll have, we have, I have a very, very short um, PowerPoint presentation to talk about it, but before I, you want to definitely, especially those of you with the young dogs and adolescent dogs, you really want to break it down into very small pieces. We tend to want to lump it and have it, you know, take them to the, to a, a rave and ask and have them <laughs> come to you <laughs> versus my border collie would have a great time at the rave <laughs> versus truly versus having it like in Joanne's case, in a quieter environment, things like that, where there's not a lot of stuff going on. She's very careful about that stuff. Right. For obvious reasons, but uh, working in a more in, in a, at a low level distractions outside is really key to success. Right. To be able to do it right. Um, as the dogs are a little older, they should be able to handle more and they have a little bit more of a, or like my dog is also, my shepherd also likes balls. So a ball would definitely trump everything else. So if I had that, but I also don't want to use them as a bribe, like the uh, jo Joanne, Tango and Fire, they like to play ball. So if you're, as long as you're, you're they're engaged playing ball with you, nothing else matters mm -hmm. versus, you know, um, you know, other dogs that might be interested in, you know, oh, there's a squirrel or whatever it is. Okay. So uh, we're going to talk about, and actually we'll each take a section because I, my vision, uh, my eyes are tired today. I don't know why. It's called Help age. <laughs> Help being maybe, old. Maybe wow. you should hold the computer a little farther. Away. <laughs> I know, right? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's not it. Uh, wow, this has a new feature. It's so cool. <laughs> Why am I so blind? It's very, very cool. You know. Did you did you mm. just have a, a visitor? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. So I, I know like <clears throat> for me too. Oh, you are you have it, right? Um so yeah, yeah. using the ball for me was it was a good way because they're so focused on the ball, mm. right? To make them do some things, right? To focus before you throw the ball again. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes when you have something like that, that they're so focused on, they don't care where they are, but still a good place to test environments. So Not do you see this, the slideshow? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So to start any, and this is to start with uh, working distractions, this is um, this is what we use to get to get started, as well as to, and, and we build on this, right? But this is the basic. These three things are the basic things you want to work on when you're trying to get your dog used to being in an environment or working on a different. Or we're helping your dog focus, and what happens is most of us want the dogs to be able to just walk in and handle it, especially if you have young dogs, right mm -hmm. away. And only dogs will determine when they're when you can move on or make it more challenging, right? So these are the three uh, things, and we'll talk about them. the The first one is distance or how proximity from the stimulus that, and it's not really reacting, but you know, you're interested in how long do you ask them to deal with it, and how intense, right? One dog sitting quietly, or two or three dogs playing, right? You want to think about that. Okay, so uh, Joanne. How about you take the distance and proximity part? <laughs> sure. So, you know, the, the dog will actually kind of tell you um, how, how much they need. And so every dog is different, as we know. So um, <clears throat> I always like to tell people when you're starting with distance, start farther away than what you think you'll need. Probably double it, right? Because what you think your dog can handle versus what they can actually handle, you mm -hmm. don't want to set them up for failure in the very beginning. Um, so, you know, dealing with something like a squirrel, right. You might need to be a football field away. If you have a really prey driven dog, um, if you have a dog that doesn't care so much and just likes to watch the movement, maybe it can be across the backyard. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> the thing you want to remember though with the stimulus gradient and all, all of these, right, is can the dog split their attention? So when you talk about distance, if, if you are a football field away and that squirrel's trotting across the fields, right, and the dog doesn't even remember that you are on the other end of the leash, you're too close. Okay. Even though it seems like they should be able to handle something that's that far away, they are telling you that they can't. So um, again, the dog gets to set the distance by telling you, I can notice that thing and I can pay attention to you. Right. And, and space, as Joanne alluded to, space is a big deal for dogs, mm -hmm. right? What she says is absolutely right. If the dog, if you, you think that the distance is enough, you, you're not, if the dog tells you it can't handle it, you need to honor it. Because a lot of times it, oh, this is, this is not that, you know, it's not that close to you, but to the dog, it's a big deal. Right. And, and like, and when we talk about split his attention, we're talking about a dog that can look, look away and then come back to you relatively smoothly, not the dog is really fixated and is having trouble coming back to you. So it really, look, it's a, it's very specific what it looks like. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I would say, right. If the squirrel's gone and then they look back at you, not what you're looking for. Right. <laughs> so the stimulus, whatever it is, has to still be present for the dog to split their attention. Right. And the other thing is different stimuli, like they might be able to be like, yeah, I don't care about the squirrel, but, another dog might be a different story, right? Yep. Or maybe, I don't know, a bird is, a, you know, so every, everything is a, di it's different. So don't assume because he can see a, be two feet away from a squirrel and let it go that he's going to be okay doing that with, with everything else. That's not, not that's not it. Right. Yep. And uh, um, so Laura, yeah, the optimal proximity is not always the same and the dog can actually <laughs> change that every 10 seconds, right? I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm not cool. That's a red squirrel instead of a black squirrel. Oh, I can't handle that. Right. So things can look different to dogs. Right. So like tonight um, I have, so I have this little guy. And so tonight I brought him into the, to do a class. I was doing a class and I brought him in and he was okay. 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 He was able to handle it. He was able to split attention with a person, but then a dog just walked into the store and he lost his mind. And I'm like, okay, we're done. Therefore, exit dog, right? So I knew I couldn't get anything from him. And was he taking treats? Yes, but he'd take a cookie and he'd zip right back to the dog. So that fast motion is something that you also want to pay attention to because he's not able to sustain it in a thoughtful manner. And I think that's, that's the really important thing to point out as well. Yeah. Hey, while you're go while you're at it, Lisa, why don't you talk about duration? Because you're pretty good about not over not pushing that hard. I'm, um, I'm, I can be a pusher. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it. Sometimes I do, and then I'm like, okay, too much. But you know, I think, um, like, how old, like, how long the dog's able to handle that? So, like, mm -hmm. um, and and Elise talked about a tone of voice. That you know what? No, I mean, to me, I'm not really saying anything. So I think let's step back a minute and remember one of the things we're talking about is the auto check-in, right? The ability to split attention. Can you check in with me and say, hey, what are you doing? Do you care about this? This is interesting and so forth. So the ability to go back and forth, but it's not going to be a ping pong or a tennis match, right? Or a ping pong match. You're not going to be doing this. This is too much. And that is not effective. It's not a learning moment. It is you know, you're pushing. So when I start seeing the dogs start to flip their attention pretty quickly like that, I'm more apt to step away and say, we need more proximity or, you know what, let's take a break. Let's step away. Let's reintroduce it today. Uh, reintroduce it again in, in a moment. Let's see if you can gather your thoughts about it and then recover from it and then go ahead and, and redo this again. So tonight, for example, um, I had a puppy class and um, there was a Belgian Malinois in it, and then there was um, a Labrador in it who was extremely food-driven. I know, shocking, right? Oh, and my God. She, I never heard of such a thing. 
I know, right? And then there was another dog that was a Vishla. And it was so crazy because I had different levels, right? And so I was like, okay, we're going to work on distractions. And so, because I mean, ultimately, everything comes down to a connection with your dog. Can your dog split attention? So your eye contact's critical. To me, that's the foundation of all your training. If you don't have a dog who's willing to split attention, you have nothing to work with. It's better talking to a rock or a wall, right? Or a husband, for those of us who have one. But, <laughs> but any hoodles. Anyway, so um I had the dogs were there and I took out a squeaky and um, the and then I took out like a it was a freeze dried duck neck. I'm, I'm torturous. Right. So I'm like, what if I are you olfactory? Are you visual? Are you auditory? So I start looking at that and I'm like, OK, the, the um, what caught my attention was the uh, the Malinois was like the um, what was it? The. Um, uh, Labrador had her had a squeaky toy and La, the Malinois was like, what? And turns and looks at the at that toy and had a hard time splitting attention, right? So then I was like, oh, note to self, let's play with that. So I pulled out a squeaky toy because we were in a, we're at Wolf Life and, and uh, Valparaiso. And um, so I started taking things and like messing with the dogs and all that. And they did pretty well with it. I was really surprised that we're in week, what are we, week um, four. And they were able to split attention because I pounded in how important it was to have that, um, to be able to split attention with different things. So, you know, I was squeaking from across the room and the Malinois was like, oh, oh dad, what are you doing? <laughs> and you could, the funniest thing I think that's so cool about it is that like when you're working on distraction, they'll kind of look at the distraction. So like if you have something here, they'll kind of look at it and you'll almost see like the wheels rolling and the smoke coming out of the ears. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, what? And in that moment cracks me up every single time because the dog, you could see the dogs processing. And then the people are like, oh my God, they did it. You know, and that to me is probably like one of the most rewarding pieces when you're doing this. But I think um, what's important is that, and then when I knew that my dog handled that, the next step was then, you know, I pulled away the, the distraction and then tried to reintroduce it again and their response was quicker, right? So that is, is key. And I think, again, a lot of us are pushers and don't get me wrong, I push as well, but then I'm like, oops, too much. And I back off immediately. So um, so duration is really, in, it's really informational in terms of the body language and the ability to, to go back and forth in a fluid manner and to be able to say, oh, that's just, whatever right and and like lisa said the younger your dog is <clears throat> the shorter your work should be yes right so when lisa's squeaking the squeaky she's not squeaking it for five minutes it's only a few seconds when for young puppies right Rural yeah I, I did once and that was enough to like cause them unsettled and they're like oh my gosh what happened what is she doing and it took them a little while to recover and remember what they were doing but then as they started to get into the flow of it they're like, oh, OK, I get this. And then you switch distraction. Right. So. Right. And so keeping the sessions really short for young puppies, very, very important. Super, yep. super important. Um, and and not and that's not to say that maybe an older dog that has a little more difficulty with um, arousal would probably be almost the same as a as a puppy. Right. You wouldn't you wouldn't work them very long anyway right. because it'd be too hard. Yeah. And we didn't mention it specifically. I know Nancy mentioned Suzanne, but um, if, if you want to know what we're talking about, if you're new to this, it's Suzanne Clothier's auto check-in. Okay. Yeah. You should just be uh, able to Google it. Yeah. And that's, yeah, right. And it's auto, The and I'll give you a link to her. Um, I'll link, give you a link to the stimulus gradient handout that you can read on her website. So I will, I will put that in the, in the chat so you guys can check it out. Um, if you have a reactive dog or you have a, a young dog or any dog or that you're working through distractions, the stimulus gradient is gold. Um, combined with the auto check-in um, is also gold. <laughs> so yep. you want to check that out. Um, all right. And I'll put that, all that stuff in the chat. Um, so in intensity. So once you have, once you understand distance and uh, once you understand distance and the duration, then you would, would you start playing with, um, with the intensity. So for example, can your dog handle one dog far away or a person or a squirrel or whatever it is 
at a at a certain distance. Now, can he handle <clears throat> two squirrels or three squirrels? Uh, you know, at at and and you can increase that intensity, and also the speed of movement. Can he handle a squirrel sitting there eating a eating, or two or three squirrels running and playing? If you've ever seen that, it's adorable, but it'll also make a dog crazy, right? Um, and the thing is, and also if and a person moving towards you, and this is what happens sometimes, people start walking towards you and they start moving really slow, which is very creepy, especially to the guardian breeds. So they'll tell you, they'll yeah. tell you how creepy it is. <laughs> right. So when people think you, they're just being real slow and it's like, they're being so weird that the dog's like, okay, psycho. That and looks then, very stalky like, <laughs> <laughs> why are you stalking me? Right. Which is so, actually the funniest thing ever, right? Because if you see the guardian breeds, this is really common. Yeah. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> you sure you want to walk over here, buddy? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, so, so the thing, the, the magic, you guys, is in working the distance. So when you increase distance, let's say when you get closer, you want to decrease how long you do it. Right. So, it, for example, if you're going to uh, work, with, you know, with a, a food distractor or whatever, and you're going to put it a little close, closer to the dog, you're going to make them you're not going to make them deal with it for that much longer once you move it closer. So you want to play with all three of these elements. Right. Um, so, in, you know, if you're if, if you're going to have them leave a, a steak or another dog, um, you want to decrease get closer then you wouldn't do it as long right? right you'd be able to move away um you you, you know before you the dog breaks right because you want to keep them in that learning mode you have to put a little pressure and that's the i think that's the difficult part for people right they put too much pressure because we want to make it fix it faster yep. and a lot of times doing it slower and smaller chunks is you'll get along you'll get much further along um and so the, the thing to remember is when you change one element you want to lighten the other two until you get what you what your desired behavior. And for those of you who are who have young dogs, they're going to mature when they're going to mature. Mm -hmm. You just got to keep putting in the work and they're going to grow up when they're going to grow up. Just you can't speed that up. You just got to put the training in and uh, and wait. And the big thing during that young time, like with Sue, with Van, he's a puppy. You don't want him practicing all the bad behavior. So um, you want you want to make sure you manage it well and not letting him practice bad things while he's growing up and while you're putting the time in so um and then this is the one that most of us have problems with right let's do just one more rep see if we can do it that when you're thinking i'm gonna try it one more time especially after a really nice successful one and you're gonna i'm gonna try to do it again don't stop yourself because that is when it goes bad and then we and then it's um, then the dog just can't can't do it anymore, and then the, you're ending on a bad note. So when you have the thought that goes in your mind that says, "Oh, I should try this again," stop it. Don't. Right. So I'm going to put the. Um, uh, so no, I'm gonna I'm gonna counter what you just said just to make sure. So end on a good note, unless. If your dog is starting to lose it, end now, right? Oh, yeah. Of don't course. hang out and wait. We can just, we'll, we want to do one more so we get a good yeah. one before we go. Don't do it. Get out of Dodge, man. That's right. Absolutely. I also think, too, you know, you have to remember who your dog is, right? So if you have a high arousal dog, a dog that has a hard time recovering, that's another consideration. I mean, there's so many components to this. If you really, you know, everyone, I guess um, that's why I think I really gravitate towards people who look at who the dog is versus no, this is how we do it. And this is the method you utilize regardless of, I don't think that's fair. So, you know, if I have a higher arousal dog, less is more always. Mm -hmm. um, but if I have a dog who can bounce back, I might push a little bit, but then if I push too far, if they're resilient and they can bounce back quickly and not stay focused in that level of excitement, then I can be like, whoops, too much. And then step back, go back where we were successful. And then, you know, and then, then let it go, so to speak, you know, make sure they recover. But you no, know, I totally agree. I think it totally depends on who the individual is and how far you can push, but less is always more period. Yep. And uh, Elise asked a good question. Uh, what tone of voice, right? 
um, actually having a more normal mm -hmm. conversational tone of voice is best. So that whole be firm, no. But you also don't want to be like, come on, puppy, 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 because you that you might do it in an emergency. But I think whatever whatever your conversational voice is, I think in what you normally would use is is fine. You don't have to uh, think about oh, I gotta make, I gotta do this voice. It just just as if you're talking to someone else. Like if, let's say uh, I was, you know, like today I was at a COing, a, I'm in Ohio COing a trial and I saw a cute little puppy and I'm like, oh, and if you're trying to get my attention, you you might need to say, hey, hey. <laughs> and you might have to, uh, you might have to tap me on the shoulder to get my attention, right? That might be a little more that I need or on a regular voice, but you wouldn't say, hey, Nancy, Nancy. <laughs> to get me away from the puppy, right? That would be weird. So it'd be like normal. You'd be like, hey, let's go this way, right? And you'd, you'd make sure you very, just like a normal relationship with with any with, that you would with, have with anyone. Right. Um, so not yelling and not babying. No, just normal. Come here. Jo you know, Joanne is actually really good at that. She's very, like, has a very neutral tone all the time with the, her dogs. And it's like, she there's no baby, blah, come on, baby, or not, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and you, if you're gonna, her. Yeah. well, and if you're gonna, and if you're gonna use a strong, a more, a firmer tone, it should be for a really good reason, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Danette had a comment, and and I know one of our previous pieces of feedback was not everyone can see all the comments, right? So I'm gonna read it. It's a little long. How do you train your husband to help with these things? We have four and a half acres. My husband thinks Levi should come when he whistles like our previous dogs did. We adopted Levi from LSP two years ago. He's approximately eight years old. All of our previous dogs we got as puppies. And I think it's easier to train when they're young. I've told my husband it's different for rescues. Levi shouldn't be able to roam. He attacks other animals. So mm -hmm. yeah. I... I think you, um, number one, should just go online and show your dog um, court cases and what they settle for uh, when a dog attacks another dog. Your um, husband, show him your husband. Not show your husband, yes. <laughs> Lisa, the dog won't did care. Did they say it was $55,000 on the average case? It's on average, $55,000, but it's, it, that's a dog-to-human bite. Oh, okay. It's a dog-to-human bite. Dog-to-dog, -dog, it's different, and it's pretty interesting, well... I had a conversation with a client, but you're right. I mean, there's no, unless you go to civil, like a small claims court type of thing, because they can chart, you can go for um, like, um, what do you call it? Like um, if they are uh, property, right? So mm -hmm. damaging property versus that, but yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, I mean, the ramifications of another dog attacking another animal is really not cool. Awful but too. anyway, yeah. yes. But, um, and I know here, um, and again, everything's different, but I know here, if your dog were to go out and uh, like pretty severely attack another dog, you can be deemed a dangerous dog, which means anytime your dog is outside, even in your own yard, they need to have a muzzle on. Yeah. So, yeah. right, just educating your husband to the repercussions mm -hmm. of that. I mean, before you even talk about training a recall, right? I, I mean, like either you don't let him roam or you can pay for a fence. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's good, Danette. Danette says she doesn't live close to neighbors with other dogs, but the thing is, the practicing that behavior is still. You're, I, I agree with you 100. percent And and not always. Um, it, it, and yes, I would agree with you, Danette. Training a a puppy is better, easier than training a, a rescue. But you can do both. We've done. I've done both. Right. Yeah, and I, I think. I think know, the I've thing. Done, that, go ahead. Done. So I've had both and both have been, I've been able to transfer and get decent recalls and keep them from, you know. So, <laughs> so the thing is, is that remember with puppies, you have more neuroplasticity mm -hmm. when they're younger versus when they're older. Right. So it's no different than us. There was a really cool um, thing on YouTube called, uh, if you go on our, um, yeah, YouTube, look up smarter every day. And a while ago, I got caught on that. And I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but this guy, he does these different science experiments. And he did this one experiment called the backward bicycle. And the backward bicycle was he tested how long it took his son, who was like 10 years old or so, how he could learn versus versus himself. So what he did was he took a bike and changed it so that 
when the steering wheel turned this way or the handlebars turned this way, the, the um, tire went that way and vice versa. So it was really cool to see that. And the, the child totally got it much quicker than the, per, the, the person with the other habits, right? Because remember, it skips that frontal cortex to go back to patterns, right? Our body wants those patterns. So it's really interesting. Um, but it is true. And yes, you can train it. But remember, if you get an older dog who has those bad patterns or bad beha other behaviors that are undesirable, I should say, in order to fix that, you must set up management tools in place in order to get to that point, right? Right. So, and that's why it works. If you're consistent and you have um, uh, uh, management tools in place, then you're less apt to um, rehearse those behaviors over and over again. We already know they're good at it. Why would we allow them to practice it? Right. And this is why uh, for Sue with Rambo and Sue with Van, those two dogs are young. So mm -hmm. not allowing them to practice the poor beh the behaviors you don't want is important during this time while they're learning it. Because mm -hmm. it'll make it go quicker, I promise yeah. you, right? So, for example, this is this is where uh, training collars come into play. So, when Jive was a puppy, I didn't. She loved to pull. I I needed a training harness to get her not to pull, so that I can eventually teach her teach her, while I was teaching her not to pull. Right? I had to I had to stop her from doing it so that I can practice so I can train her not to to walk nicely on a leash. Um, and I have been there with you all. It took me two years to train that that dog not to pull me. <laughs> She's mean, a little persistent. I'm like, oh my god! I'm like, I'm a dog trainer for crying out loud. I should be able to make this happen. <laughs> and um, and she was a she was my she she's a dog that took the longest to train not to pull me. Um, but I had to manage it until she was able. And for me, my criteria, I wanted to get rid of the harness and have her on a collar. Mm -hmm. Like that it, for me until I got there, I don't think my, I, I won't consider my dog trained. Right. So I wanted to make sure she can walk nicely on a regular collar. So that to me is what my criteria was. Everybody's is different, but that's what I wanted. But it took me two, almost two years. She was almost two by the time she finally stopped um, wanting to drag, wanting to drag me across the parking lot. But I also didn't let her practice it every all the time either, because if she's, if I'm letting her pull sometimes, and then um, at other times I'm doing, it doesn't work. You have to not allow them to pull so that they don't practice it. And, and that's why good training is so important early on because your, your dog, like us, we will default to the, the stuff we learned earlier on than the new stuff that, you know, that we're learning now. So, and we have a tendency to fall back on our habits just like the dogs do. So when they're young, not allowing them to do that is really key. Uh, while you're training and for the people for those of us who had rescue dogs you had to it just took longer than it would have maybe if they were puppies right yep yes so yeah sue the pulling so you you might have to put uh put them on on some kind of a training collar or a harness usually works well and while you're working on the while you're working on teaching them not to pull and then the other thing when you bring him to the facility, that is a very stimulating environment for him. So you have to manage that nose, uh, uh, food on the nose while you're coming into the building because that is, he's too young to ask him to be able to do that uh, without like losing. It's just a very stimulating environment. So it's, it's hard. And he's very friendly. He likes everybody. But yeah. And so you, it might take you a while to get in the building. It did me for, you know, in the beginning. Because I would not let her pull me in the building because she wanted to do that all the time. So it's like, no. So you can't let him practice that behavior, right? So I do have a video <clears throat> if you want me to share this. Yes. Um, I have a video of a, so this is Little Timber. Don't mind me in my comfy clothes. Um, <laughs> you can tell I'm super fancy. Um, but well, what I share the screen. I will. Okay. You're prepping us. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm prepping. <laughs> so this is Timber, and I do day school out of my house where I'll take and work the dogs for the day. And so we know Timber loves, loves, loves other dogs. So I had the dogs in crates, and I was reinforcing the dogs while working this guy. So um, 
so splitting attention with the distraction and this was this wasn't necessarily outside but it was technically an outside situation for um this guy so i will pull this up oh, why do i hate this <laughs> how come it doesn't what is happening anyway while lisa's doing that so go ahead, just just go ahead, keep working on it. Once you get it, I'll, I'll yep. be quiet. <laughs> um, so one of the things that, uh, a couple things, when you're working on some of the distractions, getting some, some of the behaviors in your house, um, like a, a good leave it command and a good recall uh, is key for working with distractions. And then eventually your yard and then so on and so forth, right? So it's a really important you get, good solid behaviors in the house at home before you uh, try to go out into the world with it. It gets, it gets a lot more complicated if you try to do it all at once. Right. Um, all right. Sorry, guys. Let me figure this right, out. Good. Yep. So now we see your screen. Yep. So, How do I? Uh, hello. 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 Oh, my. <laughs> So, st so stop sharing. Oh wow. my God. Okay. That was awesome. Hold on. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't drink. Uh, we're not drinking on these uh, calls. Right. Right. No. Uh, I, anyway, okay, so go ahead. You, you definitely want to, um, on the recalls, um, you definitely want to work on the long line at in the beginning. But again, it would be in a less distracting environment, right? A long line. Um, just so you, you have some control. And if the dog doesn't come, there's a, there's a, a consequence, right? You can go get them. If you just let the dog off leash and you don't have a recall, then guess what he's learning to do? Ignore you while you're screaming for him. So um, mm -hmm. my beagle, I had a really good recall on my rescue beagle, but I put a long, she wore a long line for a long time until I could trust that she was going to come back. And, and when she didn't come back, she got to come back. Like in Joanne's case, she did exactly what I would do. Um, you don't come to me. I'm going to get you. And then you're going to, I'm going to put you in my, um, um, you're going to go back in a crate or in the house. My punishment or box. Your punishment <laughs> box, right. So, right. So, um, but yeah, but it's like, you don't get to keep running and I'm not going to keep screaming after you to, to, you know, to come and um, um, so it's really important that you that you set, like you said, some, set up some management while you're do, while you're doing the training, so they're not practicing that that poor behavior. Yeah, and like know the dog that you have as well, right? If you don't, go to somebody who can tell you and help you because you know all of these things that we're talking about they do work for every dog. However, right. Nancy was talking about her beagle, right? It, it, we all know we think beagles follow their noses, right? If my dog is, if you have a dog who's super predatory, right? I mean, like uh, who was saying, uh, Danette was talking about her shepherd likes to go off and kill things, right? So that's a pretty darn predatory shepherd that's probably looking for other things that are moving, right? That's not that's not, I would, I would be practicing like in my driveway or, you know, in an asphalt parking lot long before I'm going to go into a wooded area or somewhere. I mean, I know squirrels and birds and all of that's everywhere, but see if you can minimize it the best you can. Um, Cause you know, those dogs do take longer. They really, really do. And I know we mentioned this t last week, two weeks ago um, when we're talking about those good recalls, you have to get the recall in before they start that chase, right? Because once right. they're already in that predation mode, mm -hmm. running after it, I, I had one dog in my lifetime that I could call off of a moving animal, right? It's just, it's hard. It's really hard when you have those dogs that fixate on and they're already started the chase. Right. Uh, right now, the only one that I can call off a moving animal is my lab. My shepherd, I don't know. He may, he, he, I have a 50 50 on that one, but my lab's the only one I can call her off of anything. But him, <laughs> I'm um, watching so him run fast, cat. I don't know because he was pretty darn focused <laughs> on the moving thing. Yes, he was, <laughs> but my lab will come back no matter what. Um, so Sue Poor asked, 
Uh, are you holding the long line or ready to step on it if needed? So, Sue, I would be holding the long line in the beginning because you're not letting him get to the end of that line. You would never let him get to the end of the line. You want him to drag it around and you want to get those recalls and those leave it's before you never let him get that lease check, right? You're never letting him get the lease check. You're teaching him just to come back without being, without the lease checking him really, really important. Cause if he's getting lease checked all the time, then he's going to wait for that lease check when he's free and he's not going to have it. So it's, you can teach him come and you're the long line. You can have it in your hand. And you're going to pay him, but you're never letting the dog get to the end of the leash. The leash is really strictly there for safety. That's it. Just to make sure he doesn't run off. But you would, you, I want you, you should behave as if he was off leash, right? Cause you're never letting him get to the end of the leash. Uh, and it's going to suicide squirrel. So <laughs> yeah, Christy says, if you're working and it's really good, you're outside, you can't always control things that happen. Right. And suddenly the suicide squirrel drops a few feet in front of you. What's the recovery? Just add distance as quickly as possible. I feel like I'm dragging my dog behind me like a boat anchor. He's totally over threshold. I'm mortified. Yep. That's that moment to leave. Yep. Because there's nothing else to do. You you are right. He's totally over threshold. There's no learning happening there. Get out and start over. Right. So that's really an important piece, right? And it could happen Suicide to squirrel. it happens to anybody, right? Suicide squirrel. Yep. Um, and uh there's a video that I found. Uh this is a really I I kind of like this group up in Canada, the call McCann dogs. Uh, they have some good training videos that I, I, I like Kiko pup and I like these guys. I've been pretty pleased with what I've seen now. Cause sometimes I watch and you're like, Oh my God, I can't even look at it. But <laughs> this guy's this, uh, well, Lisa, I, do you have the video? Did you find yeah, it? Yeah. I, I just text, I sent a cop, sent a copy to, uh, Joanne. I don't know if you can pull that up because for whatever reason, I'm having a difficult time sharing that. Okay. Sorry. You emailed it to me? Yeah, I um, Facebook messaged it to you. Facebook messaged it to me. Okay. Yes. Um, I've heard of Kiko Pop. Yeah, she's really good. So uh, while Joanne looks that up, I'm going to show this. This is a, I was pretty, like, I'm pretty pleased. Um, uh, this is the, how you start. He's talking a lot, but I'm going to get skip to the part where he's um, talking about how to, uh, Start teaching your dog a really solid, solid leave it, which is key and really important, right? Um, so doing that, um, oh, let's see. Um, why does this? Okay, hold on one second. I'm not sure why. All right. I got Lisa's, so. Okay. Okay. All right. So you see that video. He's talking a so little bit. There's not noises going, going on, on or other things because we really want to allow our dogs to get focused on this thing first so that we can show them how to ignore it. Now, now here's how I'm going to set this up. I'm going to take this item that I know my dog can be pretty interested in, and I'm just simply going to put it on the floor. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't care, care if he sniffs, sniffs it right now, because, because I do want his interest. Um, if your dog is interested in other things, switch out for something that's a little bit more interested, interesting, interesting to him. him. Now, now, I'm going to place it on the floor, and I'm simply going to move a little bit further away. Hey, but I'm back here. Good. I'm going to encourage him to move with me. Now, here's what needs to happen. I need to have him take notice of what that distraction is, and then I need to give my command. Now, the command that I'm going to use is leave it, and leave it means... Look away from what you're looking at and check back in with me. It doesn't mean run away. It doesn't mean anything else. It simply means look back at me. Okay. Now, I am also going to use a little food so that he understands how to respond to that command. Now, two things are really important when I do this. Um, I am not going to go. To, I'm not going to try and go as close as I can to that distraction because to me, it's not about going as close as I can to that distraction. It's about teaching the dog to respond to the command in spite of that distraction. That's, that's a very, very different, different approach. approach. I'm, I'm going to work further away from this thing. So I'm going to get a little food in this situation. situation. I'm going to put it in my left hand. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tell him, okay, and I'm going to take a couple of steps toward that container. The moment his eyes look in the direction of that container, I'm going to say, leave it. 
and then I'm going to immediately going to put the food in his nose, and I'm going to turn him 180 degrees away and praise and reward him as we do. Okay, so real time, it looks like this. We're just going to move a little bit, okay? He knows I have a little bit of food in my hand, but it's not on his nose. Okay. Okay, bud. Good boy. Now, he also knows I have a little food in my hand, so I'm going to make this a little harder. Leave it. Yes, good boy, hooray, excellent, good job, excellent job, buddy, good job. So I said leave it, I immediately put the food to his nose and used the food to turn him away. Now, it happened pretty quick with this dog, he moves quite quickly. Um, but the one thing I wanna highlight, I'm gonna do it again, is I'm not pulling on his leash at this point. I'm saying, here's the command and here's how to respond to it. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Okay, bud. Good, so I'm keeping the food away from his nose, leave it. Yes, good boy, excellent, very good. Now I'm gonna try it again. And if all is going well, I'm gonna try and move a little closer to the distraction, okay? Now, if I move closer and I say leave it and my dog is so distracted by that thing that the food doesn't help them, you're just gonna be patient. You're gonna put that food in their nose and just create a little bit of space for the distraction but resist the urge to pull on them and walk away with a tight leash, okay? Again, we're still in the teaching phase. We'll test this in a minute. Leave it. Leave it. Yes, good boy. Excellent. Now, I'll try and go a little closer. Oh, he says, I know I've got food there, so leave it. Yes, good boy. Excellent. All right, so this was a really uh, quick, easy video. But you see what I mean about teaching the whatever command you're going to use it doesn't have to be leave it. It could be whatever. But when you have to teach it in an environment where it's not so busy, like in your house, in your yard, where it's not crazy busy um, so that you have that behavior. The younger your dog is, the quicker they're going to pick that up. And you, you could use here. You could use leave it. it. It doesn't matter what you use, but you want to teach them to start to come away from it and focus on you. And eventually you would obviously do away with food. But initially you're teaching him what that means. Leave it or here or come away from it is that's what I mean. Come away from that um, and be able to move away easily without pulling on the leash. And that's really an important piece, because I think if you're pulling on the leash, you've gone too far. It's too much. Right. All right. All right, Lisa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I don't know why it doesn't do the same thing. I'm not sure, but I'm not technical. Got it? Yep. Got it. All right. I did not put sound on. Do you want sound? Perfect. No, I don't. Okay. So um, this little guy, I know he likes dogs, and these guys are all working on how to be in crates with no big you know, whatever. So I toss the cookie away. I'm just working on him trying to stay with me. He's doing pretty good considering. Um, but I've done a lot of pre-work with this dog, with this puppy. He's about three months here. And I'm giving everyone cookies for tolerating him being around in the crate. And he's doing pretty good considering I'm like not even watching him. Like he's, but he's also hungry. So um, I think here I'm working some recalls with distraction and I'm having him come to my hand. It's a little, it's hard for him, especially with friends, but there he goes. Right. And I tossed that guy a cookie because he tolerated the pup there. So this was a pretty, I don't know. I consider this pretty heavy, uh, more advanced for, yes. pup, but I done, I've done a lot of work with this guy to get him to be to this point. Yeah. So I'm teaching a collar grab here to be able to call off of the other dogs. Now, mind you, he's super, he wants to play with other dogs. Yeah. So really quick, one of the things you want to notice about this video is the smooth body language of the dog. There's no tension. He's mm -hmm. pretty relaxed. I mean, he's a pretty upright dog anyway, but he's pretty, you know, there's, he's not, um, there's not a lot of tension. He's just, he's excited and all that, but he's, his body language is pretty soft. And that's what you're really, that's what you're looking for, right? He wants to play, but he's making really good decisions easily. And that's the big key here. Just, he's making the right choices easily. Um, he'll get stuck occasionally, but very, but it's a very short session, you know, short time. So that's really important. And here it was a very short training session yeah. um, that Lisa was doing. So that's really important because it's like, it doesn't take, it doesn't take, you know, a, a super long uh, time. 
So that was trying to call him off of, I don't know if I had food or water in that bowl for him. So I was trying to do some distractions because his issue is that he does like to run off outside and they don't have a fence. So my recommendation was to do a long line so that when he does go outside, if he doesn't come, you have a, a safety measure for him. Yep. Okay. Come here, little dude. I think that was yeah. it. That was great. <laughs> so, but that was really good. And so that was a really good um, demo on like how, his body language is soft and that McCann dogs, the body language of, of that dog was soft and relaxed. There's not a lot. It wasn't, if, if the dog is having difficulty giving you the behavior, it don't move on. Just right. keep working on it until you get that. And yeah, for that little dog, that little, that level of distraction was up there. Yeah, you know it mean? was. We worked so. hard. We mm -hmm. did work no. hard. So, um, so, so, uh, uh, Lisa alluded to the follow me game, Suzanne's follow me game. Um, and some of you who train with us kind of know it already, but um, basically it's putting the onus on the dog to keep track of their handler. And that is a key and really, really important. Um, Deb, I use, I'll be honest, I use like a 30 foot mm -hmm. when I'm working my 30 feet, like a big long, it's a super big long line. Right. Uh, it's actually, I use my tracking line. <laughs> this is what I, I use for that. Um, when I'm teaching them to come when called and making sure I have control so that, you know, cause, and just to me, 30 feet is far enough away. I don't need them any further than that. So usually um, that's what I use. Um, and I work on the, I work on the follow me game. Um, I tie, I might tie the leash to a tree and I just, so I have my hands are free and teaching the dog to come when I call them just while make, making sure they're safe. So um, uh, Lisa and I used to do those classes all the time. We don't as much anymore. I am doing them again. And I know Lisa's doing some on Saturdays again because um, the need is there. So we need to do it. I mean, if you get a chance and the other thing I tell people go to places where they're enclosed in an enclosed yard, right? So if you're in a closed yard, you can do it in your own yard, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can set up different scents or whatever and work on that. Um, I do it with my dogs in my yard. And then once we're able to do that, I'll take them out on the long line for whatever. For this little guy, because I know the further away he is, because he's more independent, he's a little Pomeranian husky mix. Um, he's a Pomsky. So he is more apt to be like, you don't have great ideas, see ya. So, you know, I do a lot more uh, long line work with him to teach him to follow me. In the yard, he's not super interested in doing it, but in when we're out and there's no distractions, so like in the yard with other dogs, forget it, he, I'm lost. He, it's too much for him, he can't do that. When he's off leash and the dogs are out and off leash as well, he'll come if the other dogs come. And then what? how I treat that is if he's late to the party, he's, you know, I might give him one or two cookies the first or second time, but after that, I'm like, no way. Sorry, you're, you're last, all the hors d'oeuvres are gone too bad. So, and then we go out to the other place when there's less distraction. And then I'll work with a dog who's more trained to be able to help with that for him to set the pattern of behavior for more uh, reliable behavior for that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say too, I had a, well, I have a neighbor. He doesn't have that dog anymore, but I, he was one of those ones whenever he would hear my dogs outside, he would let his dogs out. And his dogs were a fence. He had one dog that was a fence fighter, right? That's and awesome. so it was back when I had a different dog. And so he he would be like, are you serious? And then he would kind of walk over the fence and then like, you know, he would go back <laughs> to that dog. So, you know, I, I worked with him in the yard, right, on pretty great recalls because I as soon as I heard those dogs come out, come and we went inside, right? Well, then it got to the point where it's like every time my dogs went outside, he's let his dogs out. So <laughs> I went over and talked to my neighbor like, stop so that. Like, <laughs> 15 minutes when you let my dogs pee and then I have to go to class. So like, just stop. Oh, sure. Sure. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> well, that's a funny thing. So like Timber, the next door neighbor, the mother of the, the family that lives there, Timber will go outside to pee and she sees him and she like shakes the handle and he goes running. <laughs> like, that's terrible. Stop it. You need to talk to her, make her stop it. Because he's like, oh, I'm coming. Hi, you know, because he's super social. And I'm like, that's terrible. So that's why I was like, attach him to the line. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. And then you want to, you want to be able to get a lot of reliability, yes. right? A lot of reliability uh, and making sure that they, that you're getting, you know, your dogs, um, your m- most important. And also we like uh, with my lab, she's able to come out of play with her friends, right? She'll play, but she comes out of play very easily. Uh, my shepherd has a little more difficult time doing that. He's b- much better now because he's almost five now. But um, but it was difficult. He, you could see him like, okay, I want to come to mommy, but oh, I'm having so much fun over here. Um, so uh, and 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 calling off calling off a dogs is usually the most challenging for most uh, most folks, um, especially like Deb Evans that lives in the city and all that stuff. It's it's a it's a very very um, busy place. And so there's distractions everywhere. So that's the challenge there, right? You're living already in a place where you can't get away from the challenges and all the distractions, and then you still have to train it. So it can be done. It's just going to take longer. Mm-hmm. Like in that situation, it's just going to take longer because you can't manage the situation enough because the world does go, you know, it goes on. And, and I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot of time, but I, I, I think I, I worked on my recalls and, and coming here and to leave stuff alone, maybe, I don't know, for like two or three minutes a, a day, because I don't have a lot of time. I just was more consistent about it when they were younger and, and it worked out pretty well. Like my dogs were pretty good at that. Um, so it doesn't take as long as you think. You just have to be real consistent, which is hard. Life goes in the way. You have families, kids, and things like that. But even if you do a couple of those, a couple of those things every so often, uh, you know, every day, even if it's a little bit. So um, like that, working that leave it command, working a really good recall. If you do that a couple of times a day, when you go out into the world, your dog should be able to handle better, and you'll start to see some successes. And then when you do have some successes. Don't go crazy, and then then go. Like, oh, let's go to downtown Chicago because not going to work. You, you're really going to if you're in suburban in suburbia and you only see one or two dogs, you're, and they do really good ignoring those dogs. Don't go to Lincoln Park in Chicago <laughs> where there's a thirty dogs in a in a block one block radius. You ain't going to make it. It's not going to be a good thing. So you have to build up to it, and slower is better, right? Uh, <sighs> What else? Any other questions? I think we covered most of it, but uh, consistency is key. Doing the stimulus gradient for the for distracting the dogs is important, and the auto check in. And again, I think you can find all that on Suzanne's website. I gave you the link for the paper uh, for the thresholds for the stimulus gradient. Um, yeah, and and that's what I mean. It's really um, challenging when your dogs and with the neighbors' dogs. Luckily, we are. I had to actually did have to teach my dogs to my neighbor's dogs bark at my dogs all the time. So uh, my shepherd does not bark at them. My lab was actually the one that was fence fighting. And I taught her to, when I gave her a cookie once or twice, and she goes, oh, okay. <laughs> Leave them alone. Because <laughs> I want cookies more than I want to bark at dogs. Thank God. Uh, so I don't usually, uh, usually have too much of a problem with that. Um, but yes, my neighbor's dogs are, they have a bunch of little Shih Tzus and they tend to come out and bark at my dogs. However, my neighbors are wonderful. I'm very lucky. If they're barking and carrying on, they bring them in and, or, you know, or if they're, and then, or they're watching them and keeping them quiet. So it's a, in my case, it's a, it's a good thing. My neighbors are very nice. Don't have the neighbor that lets the dogs out when my dogs are out. And then if they see that my dogs are out, they wait until my dogs come in and then they let their dogs out. So they're pretty cool. That's pretty great that way. So not, not as much of a problem. Anyway, so uh, distractions, it takes time. And that's what I mean. You want to do it before the weather uh, gets so much better. Um, genetics. Uh, so Mary, uh, that's so the question is, do you think training can ever overtake genetics, which pertains to distractors versus attention. Well, and I think what you're talking about genetics is prey drive because that's where the distraction piece might become a problem. Yes, for distractions or other do- being able to work around other dogs and come off of it um, will definitely is definitely doable. But if your dog is a, has a, a, lot, a really high prey drive, it's always going to be there. 
So you're always going to have to manage that, especially when, you know, other dogs or whatever. But yes, can you get them to come away from things or being able to leave things alone? Um, yes. It's just going to take a lot of training, you know, and maturity as a dog gets older and all mm -hmm. that. Because I know you right. have young dogs. So, yeah. And that, and it also takes a lot of really wanting to test the freedom. I, don't do it until you have just mm -hmm. such a solid, reliable, because if they make one bad decision, that is, it'll set you back a big chunk. So, right. Yeah. I mean, to me, and, and Mary, I, don't, I haven't really met your puppy. Your, well, I don't think he's a puppy anymore, but right. I, I mean, to me, when, when we have dogs that just really struggle with some things and we just want to see where we're at in training and we give them an off leash freedom, right. And, and they make a really bad decision. It's just, it really sets you back. So sometimes there are dogs who they can split their attention and they can do things and they just aren't reliable off leash. And that doesn't mean you won't get there, but there are dogs that are like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's like, for, but you can get that reliability where they can ignore things. Yes. Um, you know, even if you're never is, even if your goal is never to be off leash, but that you're on leash right. and to be able to leave, that is a on leash. Being able to call off things and 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 being absolutely, it's absolutely doable. Yep, absolutely. for sure. Time. Um, believe me, I had a beagle that had a nose on her that would have, and she had a one of the best recalls i worked it more than anything else in her life because i didn't want to lose her but uh but yes i had to that was a that was a tough one my uh, the current dogs and dogs before her weren't as difficult but she was a little tougher that way for sure mm -hmm. um so that so we uh one of the things that we are doing more of and i think i don't know if joanne is at her place because i know joanne's in north island uh but we are doing more outdoor uh, training type stuff so that the people get people can set up that situation in the safe under supervision to make sure that things are being um, that you're setting things up properly for your dog as the, the summer heats up. So if you want to visit our websites for your canine, the canine defined and for better or for worse to see what classes we have going on. I know uh, we are doing um, some outside stuff. Um, to get to get the dogs ready for the summer because we're seeing um, trying to get ahead of the dog dog attacks and uh, distraction work and all that and trying to get ahead of that um, mm -hmm. before it gets really warm because it's just we're seeing such a big problem. I know I know it's a problem where Joanne lives, a problem where we are. So and I, yep. I don't many places. So um, that's why I wanted to talk about distractions and kind of how to work on it. Don't rush it. Just start working on it uh, little by little. Yep. And I know um, for those of you who are trialing people, I don't have it listed yet, but one of the things that I'm doing is um, uh, dogs that just go nuts in the car at other dogs or people, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're just going to have a little mini seminar on how to work on that because, yeah. right? Yeah. Nothing like walking by a car and going, oh my God, what's in there? <laughs> so <laughs> True. All, All right. right. Good stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, we've got a lot of... Lots and lots of other stuff uh, coming up as well as we're trying to uh, navigate the because uh, we're we're Lisa and I are doing some online behavior stuff and um, and uh, nose work stuff. So stay tuned; it's coming. All right, uh, thank you all. Appreciate it, uh, and see you all next week. Bye. 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 <laughs>